Hi, I'm Melinda Rose. And I'm Krista Zanoli. And this is Light Matters for March 30th, 2011. In this week's Light Matters, nanoparticles morph into new materials, a tabletop accelerator is simulated, graphene improved cell imaging, and a new biophotonic center is formed. A low power laser, similar to common office laser pointers, can cause gold and carbon nanoparticles to assemble into long chains that follow the laser beam as it moves. In the experiment at Argonne National Lab, carbon nanoparticles decomposed or deformed to create a kind of glue that enabled the creation of long golden carbon chains that assembled continuously wherever the laser was pointed. Gold nanoparticles were added to the sample because they are known to boost Raman signals. Because Raman spectroscopy requires the use of a laser, the researchers surprisingly found that gold carbon chains would form wherever they moved the laser. They were surprised that such a low power laser could have such a big effect. They say the optically directed assembly technique might be used with new drug delivery systems or as a way to help find better materials for use in everything from catalysts to semiconductors. Full 3D simulations of a tabletop laser plasma wakefield accelerator have been achieved in just a few hours of supercomputing time. Researchers from several national labs working with an industry partner borrowed a page from Einstein to perfect a revolutionary new method for calculating what happens when a laser pulse plows through a plasma in an accelerator like the Berkeley Lab Laser Accelerator, or BELLA. Using its boosted frame method, the team achieved full 3D simulations of a BELLA stage. Tabletop sized accelerators are seen as the best hope for the technology in the future as conventional high energy machines such as CERN and Geneva grow ever more vast and expensive. In just one meter, a single Bella stage will accelerate an electron beam to 10 billion electron volts, one fifth the energy achieved by the two mile long linear accelerator at the SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory. In just one meter, a single Bella stage will accelerate an electron beam to 10 billion electron volts, one-fifth the energy achieved by the two-mile-long linear accelerator at the SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory. That's interesting. So, Melinda, what's the highest level of acceleration that they achieved? Well, the team was able to run simulations up to a trillion electron volts, which they say gives them the ability to model the behavior of these accelerator stages at varying energies and puts these simulations within the reach of new supercomputers. A microscopic cloak made of graphene could change the way bacteria and other cells are imaged. A team at Kansas State University is wrapping bacteria with graphene to address challenges with imaging bacteria under electron microscopes. The method creates a carbon cloak that protects the bacteria, allowing them to be imaged at their natural size and increasing the image's resolution. The group has been researching graphene for three years, but only recently saw a connection between graphene and cell imaging research. Because graphene is impermeable, they decided to use the material to preserve the size of the bacteria cells imaged under high vacuum electron microscopes. Because these microscopes require a high vacuum, they usually remove the water from the cells. Since biological cells contain 70 to 80 percent water, it's challenging to obtain an accurate image of the cells and their components in their natural state. But Vikas Berry and his team created a solution by applying graphene, which protects the bacteria from losing water, and images the cell at its natural size. The protective carbon cloaks are wrapped around the bacteria by either placing a sheet of graphene on top or by wrapping the bacteria with graphene solution. In both cases, the graphene sheets were functionalized with a protein to enhance binding with the bacterial cell wall. Under the high vacuum of an electron microscope, the wrapped bacteria did not change in size for 30 minutes, giving scientists enough time to observe them. Also, graphene's transparency to electrons enabled clean imaging of the cells. And so how is this process going to influence future research? You know, this research is really paving the way for it, uh, enhanced protein microscopy. Uh, proteins are typically, they act differently when they're in a dry environment as opposed to when they're in a solution. And so far, most of the protein studies have been done in the dry phase. Uh, but with Barry's research, it's now allowing the proteins to be observed more often in uh, a wet environment. A new research collaboration will be formed by Boston University and the University of California, Davis, under a grant from the National Science Foundation that fosters university and industry collaboration. The new Center for Biophotonic Sensors and Systems, or CBSS, will be the only cooperative research center in the country focused solely on biophotonic sensors. 
CBSS research will be conducted at the existing facilities at BU and UC Davis and will focus on combining photonics engineering and life sciences to improve tools and techniques for disease diagnosis, drug efficacy testing, patient monitoring, and food and water safety. The two biophotonics programs specifically plan to re focus their research on biospectroscopy using advanced optical components, single cell capture flow cytometry, adaptive beam control for deep tissue two photon imaging, and live cell 3D super resolution microscopy. Industry members will direct the center research. For more on any of these stories, visit photonics.com. To subscribe to our newscast, you can click on the share icon on this video player and choose feeds to enter your subscription directly into iTunes or any other RSS program. There are also icons to share this video on most social media sites. Speaking of which, Christy, you've been working on our own Facebook page. How's that going? Yeah, the Photonics Media Facebook page is, is being updated on a daily basis. Uh, we try to put in relevant news, uh, industry news from photonics.com. Uh, we like to alert our audience to upcoming issues of Photonic Spectra and Biophotonics magazines and keep you updated on industry events. So check us out. Well that's it for this edition of Light Matters. Please send your questions or comments to lightmatters at photonics.com. Thanks for watching and we'll be back next week.